Good evening, everyone. My name is Amelia Ray. I am Haida from Old Masset, um, Haida Gwai, and I'm the assistant curator at the Bill Reed Gallery of Northwest Coast Art. Um, before we get started, I want to uh, take a moment to acknowledge that the Bill Reed Gallery is uh, on the ancestral unceded territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the tsleil peoples, and we are really very privileged to, to do our work here in these really special territories. Um, questions, if you guys have any questions at any point, um, please put them in the chat and we'll have some time to, to answer them in the end. Um, and the talk is being recorded and we'll likely, we'll put that onto our YouTube channel um, afterwards. Um, tonight's talk, we're joined with uh, Jesse Berlin and Marlo Wiley Berlin. Um, they are the two exhibi exhibiting artists in our mezzanine gallery right now in the Art of Dimension, um, which closes on October 15th. So if you haven't come to see it yet, definitely come and check it out. Um, Skill how Jesse Berlin resides in his home village of Skidigit, Haida Gwaii, where he balances commercial fishing uh, and a love of the environment with his art career. After high school, he apprenticed with Haida artist Don Yeomans and Gitsan master jeweler Phil Janzi. Berlin has achieved a mastery of the form and now creates museum quality pieces uh, individualized by their fineness, boldness, and depth. His works are held in private collections globally and have been exhibited at the American Museum of Natural History, the Museum of Vancouver, the Haida Gwaii Museum, and the Comox Valley Art Gallery. And uh, emerging artists, Hai Ling So, um, Marlo Wiley Berlin has studied Haida art from her uncle, Skil, Skil Hao Jesse Berlin, uh, Kwakwakiwak art from Chief Homkhyala Gilis, um, Andy Everson and steam bending to create bentwood boxes from Richard Sumner. With her partner Carver Everson, Marlo is now focused on cedar carving. Um, and Marlo was awarded with two YVR Emerging Art Scholarships in 2019 and 2020, providing an opportunity to exhibit her work at the Vancouver International Airport. Um, the exhibit first opened at the Haida Gwaii Museum uh, in Skidigit um, at Kaionagai. Um, so thank you to the Haida Gwaii Museum and uh, just Gang Nika Collison and Skong Kwa'agung who are the uh, originating curators of the exhibition in 2022. Um, thank you to our sponsors, BMO, Carter Auto Family, City of Vancouver, Province of BC, Rosedale and Robson, and Chief Dunsu James Hart, Emerging Artist Program Partner, RBC. I think, I think that was it. Um, we, can, we can get started. Um, can you, would you both tell me a little bit about how you became an artist? You want me to go first real quick? Your story starts first. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I think I, I um, first went to Haida Gwaii about when I was probably about six years old that I remember and I was commercial fishing and um, yeah, I just, I started drawing really young, like, just you know when I was in early elementary school I started drawing high designs and and uh yeah I always fell in love with it really young and my grandfather was kind of a collector he he really loved high to art as well so he had lots of cool pieces in his in his home so yeah it's just since I was young and I guess the same kind of goes for Marlowe <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was always inspired by my uncle growing up and uh it was my kindergarten or not even like pre-kindergarten school that I said I, that I wanted to be an artist just like my uncle so um that was the beginning of that but I really I started um designing Northwest Coast art um when I uh, was in a screen printing course um and I learned how to screen print as well as Northwest Coast design um uh, by Andy Everson and so he taught us um, how to do form line and we started designing shirts and prints and stuff like that so that really started um, the northwest coast art but um, started carving five years ago when my mom got an artist grant to uh, get some panels and my uncle for my uncle to teach me and 
yeah, I've been carving part time since. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were in school. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just finished my BA last year, last June. So oh. doing art and BA. So yeah. Busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jesse, can you tell us uh, what inspired you to learn repose techniques um, and what do you like about the technique? Um, well, Bill, Bill's work totally inspired all of us art hide artists that especially the jewelers because because of the repose work but um no when i finished high school i got a bracelet given to me by my family it was a repose shark bracelet by don yeomans and yeah as soon as i saw it and held it uh, i kind of had the feeling that's what i really want to do and um yeah i just enjoy it a lot because it because of the sculpted aspect of how the pieces look and I really enjoy doing little human faces with different expressions and stuff like that and I just feel it's um, a form that's really hard to get bored of doing because the possibilities are just unlimited really and I spent a lot, most of my career doing tiny things, and um, I'm kind of looking forward to taking a bit of a break from the tiny things and making some bigger metal sculptures now, <laughs> but using the same techniques, but on a much larger scale is something that I'm looking forward to um, having some fun with in the next couple of years. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, Marlo, uh, in this exhibition, you you your primary uh, medium is wood carving. Um, what draws you to working with wood? That's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, well, I mainly just work in two D and wanting to get more into three D and something I definitely want to do more masks and more. Um, cultural items that's something that really um, gets me excited and so last year um, I put I made that um, dogfish mask for our clan to clan to dance and for um, cultural use and that kind of stuff gets me more excited so definitely want to be working more on that but um, yeah I don't know I, I just have a good time carving it <laughs> That um totally like leads into my the next the next question we have, which was a, a, about your your mask and and that experience for you and for your family and for um, taking that responsibility of of you know bringing that back to your clan. That's a big undertaking. And um, what was that what was that like for you? Um, emotional roller coaster actually. <laughs> it was good because we got to start the mask in. Comox where I live and then we got to finish the mask skin skidiot so that was really awesome um experience to like finish a piece in the territory and um and it was ready right before the feast the day of and all right ready to go and so it was awesome that was my first mask and then I got to dance my first mask at our first clan so it was just a lot of firsts that were really special and um yeah just very exciting times for us beginning our little journey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's um, really powerful. And uh, I think totally on brand, that's usually how things go in, in potlatch season. <laughs> anyway, the one of the last potlatches on Haida Gwaii, my mom, an hour before the potlatch decided to make me an apron for the potlatch that started <laughs> an hour before. <laughs> Not done, but things tend to happen last minute sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um we're really excited that we've had this exhibition at at the gallery for the last couple of months um and i i know that uh you've spoken about your personal relationship to bill um jesse uh do you have a story you can share um yeah sure i i um yeah i was really lucky growing up like my mom was good friends with him and um um yeah she 
she brought Bill down to see one of her friend's new sane boats and and um yeah Bill Bill had a look at the wall and he grabbed a pencil and immediately started sketching on the wall this new sane boat and he drew a a killer whale and on the in the galley wall and he looked at me and said I want you to paint it <laughs> and I was pretty young and I didn't have much confidence in my design ability because it was a, a it was a bit rough the sketch right and I knew I had places where I had to fill some things in and whatnot but I was really nervous about it and he just looked at me and said you're Haida aren't you I said, yeah do it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was the first thing I ever um got paid for as an artist like you got paid a hundred dollars or something to paint to paint the design on and it's still on the boat to this day uncle ted Asu runs it and uh yeah it was really great he um he's really neat to spend time with him in his old studio in granville island and hang out and just watch him work and it was pretty amazing and inspiring and and uh yeah i just really loved um his big pieces and his jewelry were just you know something that i always had a deep love and appreciation for so yeah i was lucky to spend a bit of time with bill when i was young yeah that's pretty uh for full circle now that your exhibition is has been at the gallery yeah 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 it feels good and um and I'm pretty happy to have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, Marlo, uh, what has it been like for you to to uh, be mentored by your uncle? You know, this is a really traditional um, hideaway of of this transfer of of knowledge, and and what has it been like for you to also be exhibiting with him? Yeah. Um... It's it's great. He's a good he's a good <laughs> uncle. <laughs> um, Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, it's continuous. I'm like still quite fresh in the form line design work, so I always like send him stuff, and he helps fix things that look a little weird, and <laughs> just dialing in and helping me uh, create the best beast. I want to create and help he helps me as well as my partner Carver he helps me bring my vision to life because at this point I'm too <laughs> fresh to bring the life into it myself <laughs> um so I'm very fortunate to have both of them and my uncle especially with the Haida form and everything and um yeah it's pretty awesome to be showing with my uncle and I thought it was really special that I mean our first one was before a feast and the show opening and just that was just really awesome and and some of our pieces are that were in the show or are in the show <laughs> are part of the feast as well so it's kind of all coming together in that mentorship because all those pieces that I'm I worked on um they're with the help of my uncle so it's all and help a little I helped him a little bit with his panel as well so <laughs> Yeah. She can help me as much as I can help her. So <laughs> she's already, I think she's already carved more wood pieces than I have. And she just started a few years ago. So. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, she's really good at wood and, and she doesn't need my help for wood carving. <laughs> I need her help for wood carving and carver yeah they helped me um get my panel finished in time because when for the opening in Haida Gwaii I was really I was I had quite a few things on the go up until they had to be turned in so yeah I was grateful for Car Car Carlo we call <laughs> Marlo and Carver because yeah. they actually helped me finish my wood panel in time for the show too so mm -hmm. No, it it works both ways. I mean, they're 
it's great um, working with um, Marlo and Carver and Comox and work on things together too is really fun and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more of that with her and I and Carver and you know um, she has big dreams and big things that she wants to do and and so do I and we can help each other accomplish those things together and yeah it's fun it's really great working with them and Right now we're up in Whitehorse and we're working with a really good friend of mine and we're we're doing copper shields and it's um, it's been really fun. The three of us are up here. We've been here for a week and we wish we had another week because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hammering on bigger metal objects is a little more time consuming than uh, where I'm used to, but it, <laughs> it's all good. We're really having fun and. Um, we're um, making bigger things, going to be making bigger things, so. Yeah. That's quite the, quite the scale change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's really great that you all can, um, can lean on each other and, and help each other out. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, Jesse, you've spoken a little bit about uh, your time fishing and connecting that with your, your art. Um, mm. Could you talk a bit more about that? Sure. Um, yeah, it's been, I, I was a fisherman first. I mean, that was my first job and, and it's always been my job. I've, um, I've had to put it aside here and there for stretches, but, you know, I always loved um, salmon seining and, you know, my grew up at a time where, you know, there was a fleet of Haida boats when I started going out with my grandfather and my uncles. There was a like a fleet of Haida Sane boats. And it was an amazing time because you could hear hear the Haida language being spoken over radio phones and and uh it was a real amazing time. And it's uh heartbreaking to see how things have gone like we as a nation we don't have any any same boats now it's it's pretty sad it's quite sad how everything has gone in that industry but I um I'm just lucky and I've been really grateful and always uh enjoy my time on the water um it's where I find a lot of my connection to spirit and and um, I'm spiritual when I'm on the water and I, you know, ask for protection and whatnot and success and safety. And, and um, yeah, I just, it's something that really helps me feel connected to nature and, and everything. It really, is, it's helped me in a lot of ways. Like it's how I, how I got by a lot of times and how I was able to buy gold to and silver to continue creating things in the off season. And the season's got much shorter these days. I'm lucky if I get a week or, or so for salmon fishing now, a couple of weeks at the most, but yeah, it was just, it's been a huge part of my life and I'm um, lucky to work with great people and um, continue to you and, and uh, it's really a great way when <laughs> when things are when things are great. But I've also been on the flip side when literally <laughs> when your boat capsizes and between Haida Gwaii and the mainland, and that's not fun. But you know that's part of the some of my life experiences I've had. But yeah, no, it's just a big part of. Um, how I feel really connected is when I'm on the water and in control of, of uh, navigating and stuff like that is things I really enjoy. And I'm, I'm lucky to be able to do that and art. So, yeah. And they, they, you know, probably cross over quite a bit. Um, and I'm sure you, you get inspired while you're out there also. Yeah. It, I think about, yeah, I, when I'm out fishing, I get to, I, um, 
I don't worry about things that are happening at home too much, but I do get a lot of ideas and and inspiration from my time out there for sure. Mm -hmm. Close encounters with whales and and things like that, and all the all the wildlife is is pretty awesome. And then our appreciation for the fish that we we um, need to survive. It's important. Mm -hmm. Um, can we talk a little bit about the clam feast and, and what that was like for, for both of you? And, and, um, I know that was a pretty big, like big undertaking, um, to have both the clan feast and the opening within a day, day of mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. 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 My mom's definitely a, a <laughs> pulled that together. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was my mom and my stepdad, Andy Everson. And my mom is Erin Brillen. Um, and uh, yeah, they did a lot of the planning for, um, and yeah, and kind of bringing back a different kind of uh, breakdown to the traditional marriage, uh, which is the bride price. Um, so um, yeah, I want to show what your pieces that you did, Rick. Yeah, no, it was it was really amazing. Um, <laughs> I I had very little to do with <laughs> the organization of that. That was all my sister and brother in law. But yeah, I had a lot on my plate. Just just worried about getting my pieces done for the show. So <laughs> I tried to stay out of the feast planning part of that. But um, yeah, no, it was really great. It was uh, amazing. Um, it was just amazing an experience. I mean, none of us really ever seen a traditional wedding and, and, uh, you know, what that entails and, and whatnot. So yeah, I was happy. I was, um, I made the, co the copper shield and a front lip for Andy for gifts to the dowry for <laughs> my sister marrying him. So, and he repaid with 600 blankets or something, something like, that. like that but yeah it was pretty cool I was um it was really awesome and I was happy that a lot of our people got to see it and witness it and it was a uh, pretty cool and you got experience. to dance it you oh yeah and then I had to dance yeah oh yeah <laughs> my first, first time dancing I had to dance the yeah <laughs> with with andy my brother-in-law so mm -hmm. yeah it was a first for for me really and but yeah it was great i'm was thrilled how things turned out and um yeah that was our dance screen that was above where the our clan was sitting the dogfish is one of our main sub crests yeah that he designed so yeah um, yeah, it was good. I I um yeah, I had a lot of fun making some of these pieces and um was happy to gift them to my brother-in-law. So who I uh admire and respect a lot and I love a lot. He's a great guy and and I was happy to make those things for our part of the dowry. <laughs> It was really cool to um because I, I did see the show up uh in, in Haida Gwaii, but it was really cool to um see the show here and um see that the the feast was able to be a part of the exhibition and, and that could be talked about and um more detail could go into into uh to talking about that part of part of the mm -hmm. uh, exhibit. It's really mm -hmm. cool. I'm really glad we could use the items and have them in the show and you know yeah. um because not all of our oh cute that's a nice photo <laughs> um because you know not all art is art it's also functional yeah art was always functional at some point especially in the old days in our <laughs> culture anyway yeah yeah, so. yeah there, in the Haida language there isn't even a, a word for art because mm. yeah. so. We we're carving everything right down to the spoons we'd use. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. was um 
Needs to talk show who we are. Halibut hooks and <laughs> everything. Everything was carved. Yeah. Yeah, and it was you know a, a, a part of our lives, a part of our day to day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really powerful, and that can be um, not just brought into into this space, but also um, shown how how they would have been used. I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's what's next for both of you? Let her rip. Um, <laughs> well, on the projects on the go are a lot more panels, but um, hope to be working on some personal projects. And um, we're potlatch prepping for next year. So we have some more masks and other things to make for um, part of our clan's um, the second part of the dowry. Um, because it was only the first part with them, Andy and his like group clan given our uh, clan a bride price and then we have to return it to them next year at the potlatch. So um, quite a few things will have to be made, thinking some metwood boxes and some masks. So yeah, those are some of the exciting projects on the go and yeah, finishing up some of the coppers we're making. So yeah. yeah. Always lots to go on the go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I um have just a couple pieces of jewelry to finish, but I think I'll be working on some bigger things in the in the very near future. Yeah, I have some ideas, but I can't reveal all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> to be seen. In yeah. The future. <laughs> I'll be a lot better with my um, social media. I promise. I uh, <laughs> I pretty much kept it under wraps for a couple of years because I didn't want any spoilers for my exhibitions, <laughs> so I didn't post much <laughs> for for quite a while. So, yeah, I'm trying to keep keep things fresh. Yeah. Um. Do you have any? Any artists for for young art for or any advice? Sorry for young artists today. Just just go after it. It's like if you want to do it, you, you got to put in the time. But just go for it. Draw, draw, draw. Lots of drawing. But yeah, you you have to go for it. You can't. Like I spent. Um, when I worked with Philip Janzi, I spent 10 years working like all pretty much daily when I wasn't fishing. I would be there every single day and put in many, many hours to some sometimes I'd do a piece of jewelry and I'd spend up to six weeks on it. So, you know, you gotta put in the time. But um yeah, just you gotta put in the work and <laughs> and but draw, draw lots. Look at old stuff and uh, just draw lots and and just go for it. <laughs> That's my best advice. <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified to give advice <laughs> because I need to take my own advice. <laughs> Consistency is great. And I, it's something I definitely need to do. Some more drawing and just consistency. If you want it, you got to get get it going. <laughs> Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like Bill said, <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're we're ready to open it, open it up to the audience for any questions you might have for Jesse and Marlo. Sure. Um I think I, I have to read them out, <laughs> but you can uh, add that into the chat. Um we have two right now. Um Marlo, could you tell us about the story behind your your big panel that's that's in the exhibition? Yeah, it's a, it's actually a um, a concept I've had for a long time, and I was excited when um, a house an indigenous housing project came up to me and wanted me to create a piece for the space. Um, it's it's for the um, Guaxidas, which is it hasn't been built yet, but it's going to be. <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, an affordable housing for Indigenous people, and it'll be in the, in the, in the entrance for that. But um, yeah, there's an eagle on top with a wing spread out and two bears, two salmon, 
and a woman in the center and um yeah the piece I, I didn't call it that but it, it makes me think of the world of um Nikiola, which is a Kwakwila word for to be one with the sea land sky and all things so um yeah I just wanted um like a a crest and an animal from each um there it is <laughs> uh, and an animal from each the sky and the land and the sea and a person to connect everything <laughs> and uh yeah pretty happy with how it turned out that was the new fresh piece for the, this show so um I'm really happy it got to be shown there um, yeah it really fits the space quite well though I'm still like in shock that we somehow somehow it went and in, got into the elevator <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm surprised if it yeah, for yeah. Sure. <laughs> a little yeah. bit worried about how we're gonna get it back in there but. Yeah. yeah for sure well, well we got it in we can yeah. <laughs> get it in there again yeah for <laughs> sure yeah yeah it's yeah. it's pretty impressive piece it's yeah a pretty pretty proud uncle when he saw that <laughs> <laughs> yeah with a lot of help from my partner Carver yeah um yeah yeah I've been um he's been teaching me how to use the chainsaw uh instead of other techniques so it's definitely a, this is the first panel I've really attacked with a a chainsaw to set the depths and stuff so it's good skills a little scary but it's good <laughs> Yeah, it totally just fits the space and this is this is kind of exactly how it's displayed in the, mm -hmm. the exhibit, um, although they're different pictures, but that's uh, mm -hmm. I think when we were at the opening, someone, someone, I can't remember who it was, but someone said to me they thought that was a a permanent piece that was in the, in the show, <laughs> yeah. that was a permanent piece of the gallery. <laughs> I said, yeah, it looks good there. <laughs> yeah. Um, not sure I just got booted off, but <laughs> I hope it's, hope it's okay. Um, where did the, and I've lost all the questions in the chat. So maybe somebody else can, can read what it is. I can read them out. Yeah. I'm not sure why I just got booted off. <laughs> your favorite piece that you've ever done. Yeah. That was the next one. Oh, hmm. Um, I the the piece that I I think well my sister's bracelet's pretty awesome but I I did um there was a a gold bracelet I had in the museum in the show in Haida Gwaii that was I think one of my faves it was an eagle with abalone eyes and a frog and a sculpin on the twenty two carat represent bracelet and the frog and the sculpin had little abalone eyes and the eagle had big abalone eyes and I think that was my one of my favorites because it was definitely one of my best bracelets um the client had to wait almost a, over a year to get the piece and I didn't want to borrow it again for <laughs> the second part of the exhibition that was in Vancouver at the Bill Reed there I didn't want to borrow it again so but I would have loved to have that in the show as well but I just have to make a better one <laughs> put it on my list the next one is any advice for artists who do not have family and cultural support Ooh, it's a good one hmm we looking at me for <laughs> you're older and wiser <laughs> yeah, older and wiser yeah um, um you just have to do it yeah like you know you, I didn't always have support from it people and it's just you just have to choose to do it and wake up every morning and and do it um yeah it's tough uh you know it's it's not always easy path being an artist and, and and you know I was I was lucky I had another job too that helped support my <laughs> art addiction 
I loved uh, I loved what I did, so Looks I was like lucky. Lucy wants to say something. You have your hand up, Lucy. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh hi! Hello. <laughs> Sing yes, lasty too long. Um, I'm I'm zooming in from from Halifax. Beth and I just came came from dinner and rushed home to to watch you guys. Um, Dalung di Kwagidang. I'm I'm really proud of all all three of you. It's my first time watching Amelia um, moderating, and it just is really nice to to see the two two of you together and to be able to listen to you. You guys are such such pros. <laughs> and your show was so beautiful. I'm I'm really Thanks. really um, happy we got to go and experience it. So my question is about your experience um, going into museum collections and studying Haida pieces. Can you can you talk about your experience going into look at old old things in museums? Sure. Um, I actually I've only really got to do it once and um, that was in the first exhibition I was in totems to turquoise and I don't even remember what year that was but it was quite a while ago but I just remember I was absolutely floored at how huge their collection was in the downstairs and the when you open up your own aisle and it was just I I couldn't believe how many pieces we're we're in there and the the it, i was just mind blown like i i actually spent three days going looking at stuff and um it was my first time in new york and and uh you know my sister wanted to go out and have fun but like i was i was in there with uh, my teacher philip janzi and i think dempsey bob and somebody else and they were all looking at their stuff and I was just looking at the Haida stuff but I I remember I could barely move walking out of there like every single day I was mentally physically and emotionally drained like totally drained like looking at that stuff it yeah it, it was it, it wasn't easy actually like I, I was emotional looking at a lot of pieces and and a lot of things it was it was really it was tough but like amazing of course I mean inspirational amazing but also very emotional and um you know um I don't know whether it was the energy attached to some of the pieces or what but it was like really heavy like I um I was just completely exhausted after every day and we barely had enough uh, energy to go and eat after it was uh, it really took a lot out of me I mean but it was amazing totally and because it's so many of the pieces that I've seen I never seen like I have a pretty vast library of books on northwest coast art and uh, so many of the things I'd never seen before and and uh, so yeah it was really special and but also emotional and and um yeah <laughs> that's what that's what my take on it marlo had her own experience so i'll let her talk, I'll let her talk yeah. about her i mean but. she pretty much summed it up it's always <laughs> exciting to handle and to hold those objects that were once used and utilized and you know so many of them you know used in ceremony and everything and it's just very awesome to experience that and hold them and um and get inspired from the art form and everything. Um, obviously, there's the heaviness. Um, I worked in the museum, um, the Denver Museum of Nature and Science for two and a half months, a couple years ago now. <laughs> Time sure flies. Um, but yeah, it was um, a lot of work. Um, rewarding work, but very difficult um, and emotionally exhausting as well. But I think too, it's just, it's amazing to, see so many pieces that I've never seen before. Like it was only up until recently before I got there working at the museum that they never had an online catalog until like a couple months before I got there. So like most people haven't even seen anything because their display was so small. 
in the upstairs, like the display case. So, but um, the downstairs collection was insane. And uh, so it was really cool to experience some items for the first time and posting them and interacting with other Haida people or other people on the coast because I posted a bunch of different stuff for everyone to see and everyone was really excited and it's always fun to engage and people have their input so that's always exciting and fun so definitely yeah it's good and rough <laughs> as you know <laughs> oh uh There was one more question in the chat. I'll just read it out. Um, somebody said, Marlo, I'm wondering about the mask you danced, and I don't know if you're comfortable talking about it, but I'm wondering what the image was and what it felt like to wear it. Did you feel like, did you feel transformed in some way and how was it to dance in it or with it? Yeah, it, um, so it's a dogfish. Um, so I wanted to create a dogfish, so for us to dance um, and, um, dancing it um, was definitely nerve wracking because it was my first time <laughs> dancing it. Um, but I've seen it uh, be danced quite a few times, like the dogfish dance, not this particular one, but it was very exciting. And um, uh, I did feel excited because it, like my, I got my head a name um, before I danced the dogfish, which, my the story of my name kind of associates with the dogfish so it felt like I I got my Haida name for the first time and got to dance the dogfish and then a little celebration which was really rewarding and I mean really exciting for me to be named um, <laughs> um by like a clan name and um yeah it's just kind of full circle with all the ceremony that we did and um, it was definitely transformative to have a uh, hidden name and feel like I have a place within my clan. Yeah. Ah, there's another question here in the chat. Um, Jesse, how did you feel dancing your front lit? And can you talk about why the front lit is copper? Um. <laughs> I was super nervous because I never really danced before so um it was great though <laughs> I had to look at my brother-in-law and give him the nod to say okay <laughs> give them the nod to stop the song so I'm getting tuckered out but <laughs> anyway no it was great and yeah it's copper um I I actually saw um I was inspired by an old copper that's a, a copper frontlet that's of a shark that um, we've seen in in quite a few books. And so I was kind of inspired to do do one. And I I was excited to work on a bigger piece of metal than I'm accustomed to. So it was neat to see how differently a uh, big piece moved and and yeah, that was a really, um, <laughs> that was a tough piece for me because um, my uncle passed away um, just the day before or the day I started it. So um, I had a lot of emotions happening as I created it. And for two weeks, I, I was uh, processing deeply the loss of my uncle. So um yeah I put a lot into that one and it was it felt great <laughs> it felt great when I finished dancing it <laughs> I felt a lot better about things and uh yeah I know uncle would have been proud and he would have loved to see the things that I created for that show because um he loved he loved that shark or dogfish was one of our crests and he he um he liked how I did them anyway. So. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a piece that I was really um it took a lot out of me getting it done, but I got it done and I'm really happy and 
and proud of how it turned out. And I had to thank my sister too, because she helped a lot with that one. She did some sewing for me and sewed the, the fur together and, and helped me finish that piece as well. So we were helping each other, all of us during that time. <laughs> there was a lot of, it was a big, it was a big, um, ordeal like uh, a lot of logistics involved in in uh for the family to come up and have a feast in Haida Gwaii when they all lived down in Vancouver Island so but everything was great and uh we're grateful to to share it with everybody nice um another question here in the here in the chat uh, Jesse, what keeps you going in the art world after that you have accomplished? And is there any one grand accomplishment that you want to achieve prior to the conclusion of your career? Um, I just, I, uh, I'm, I'll be doing um, high to art as long as I possibly can. And I, I think, I focused so much on tiny things. I I need to do some more monumental things. And I'm gonna try and save my eyes a little bit by by um taking a slight step back from from focusing completely on jewelry because it's really part of my body and my eyes. And I enjoyed this last week working on this cop copper shield I'm working on because I don't have to wear two sets of spectacles to see what I'm doing. <laughs> I can stick with my readers and uh, see what I'm doing pretty well. And yeah, I just feel like I, I would like to start doing some bigger things. And um, yeah, I keep working with Marlo and Carver and and do a bit, bit of teaching here and there when I can and and help people whenever I can with things. and. I don't have any, any like real um, goal set, but I just, I just know I want to start doing bigger things, and I'm, I'm not worried about achieving anything. I just, I just want to keep doing things that I love to do and working with people I love working with and, and enjoy being around. That's important. So I'm not sure what, what in store but bigger bigger better things <laughs> um is there anything you you both want to share before we start wrapping things up <laughs> really no <laughs> uh, no i think i'm good no i just i'm i'm glad i i hope i hope lots of people saw the show and enjoyed the show and and um yeah i feel we feel pretty lucky to be able to exhibit there and we love our family loved bill a lot and and um yeah it, it was it was great and i'm sure we'll see you again sometime <laughs> yeah um we've we've just loved having the the exhibit at, at the show or at the exhibit at the gallery. Um, it's been really, really great. Um, there is a, a really great video that the Haida Gwaii Museum made about um, both the feast and the exhibition. And I believe that's linked on our website. Um, and it's also on YouTube. Um, and a reminder that the, clo the show closes on Sunday. So you've got uh, the rest of this week to come and check it out if you haven't already. Yeah, how was so much, uh, Jesse and Marlo, for for coming and talking with us. Good job. You did really good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>